Good morning. Good morning. Great. Cloud has come a long way. In 2008, Jim and I got together and said, this cloud is beginning to take off. It feels good. What should we do about cloud security? A few sessions together, Jim drove with the idea of Cloud Security Alliance. Great to see this thing become and thrive so well. In today's session, we're seeing that uh, as cloud is happening more and more, CIOs, CISOs are striving. They're trying to embrace cloud at a faster pace, but they all worry about security. So today's, today's title is about how to really embrace it and thrive it and leverage the cloud rather than merely survive it. And I have the pleasure of sharing the stage with Frederick Jensen, a thought leader and a visionary in the IT space who has taken a massive undertaking of doing transformation of IT and infrastructure at Siemens, a, a massive company. And we're here to learn about some of the lessons he's learned as he's, he's kind of moving on his journey. Last year, I had the pleasure of sharing the same stage with Rafael, a GE architect, who essentially was going to go through the same journey. It's interesting that many companies find it a bit hard to move through this transformation, but when I looked at massive companies like GE and Siemens, who have done a tremendous job in this transformation, it becomes very encouraging. And Zscaler played a significant role because we became the security, cloud security platform in this journey. Today, 400,000 employees of GE and 350 some thousand employees of Siemens, they all go through Zscaler for any access to internet or any access to cloud services. Now, let's set the stage about what needs to be different about cloud security versus the traditional network security we have been doing for years and years. I'm gonna set the stage with simple thing. We all know the castles and moat years and years ago gave us perimeter defenses to keep us safe. And then if we needed to get out of the castle, we built a drawbridge, pretty simple approach. And then we said, let's put guards in front of the gate to keep us all safe, all right? And in modern times, in 90s, as networking became important and computing became important, we built our own castle and moat. We had the network, we put users and applications and servers on it, and we built a moat around it. Everything was safe. Then we saw, oh, we need to interact with the internet. Let's create a little gate, our own drawbridge, with a little firewall, a little URL filtering box. But then as traffic moved up, security issues became bigger and bigger. The CISO said, no, 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 I need an AV gateway. How about DLP gateway, SSL scanning, sandbox, and the combination of all that became an outbound gateway. And then as users wanted to come in and access those applications, we started with a little VPN box. Then we needed global load balancers. How about DDoS prevention, external firewall, internal firewalls, load balancers, what we nicely called an inbound gateway, right? Now, is that familiar, right? Now, then just like in the medieval days, we were not happy sitting inside the castle. People wanted to move out for pros prosperity and for freedom. In the same way, the IT wanted to seek freedom from its own castle and moat. So what happened? Well, the freedom came from greener pastures in the cloud for business competitiveness, for agility, for really making things happen. And as these things happen, our IT users said, well, I'm not sitting in my office. I need to work from anywhere and everywhere. They left the corporate network and connections to the internet they wanted to follow the path of least resistance rather than coming the old way. So in simple terms, you can see the parallelism. We are all drowning with the weight of all these gateways, all these security appliances, while the world wants to work, while the users want to work from no matter where they are. 
So you can try to imagine now trying to secure all your clouds, internal, external, Azure, Amazon, with a bunch of appliances. And since you don't have room to put appliances there, so then you look at, let's create a VM version of it. Now, with that background, let me hand it over to Frederick to see, as he is going through this transformation, how is he approaching it, what strategy, and what approaches is he dealing with it? Frederick, yours. Thank and you, Jay. Have it. We have two of these. Okay, good. So uh, let me start. So here we go. Let me start with quickly introducing Siemens to all of you. I think the majority anyhow knows the company. Uh, just rough figures. Uh, Siemens has done around 18 billion euro revenue last year and is employer for 340, uh, 50,000 um, employees. Siemens uh, is, of course, um, a very large company acting in 192 countries worldwide um, with uh, 2,200 offices or campus sites. And therefore, we have a very, very significant and also complex global infrastructure. I think even one of the most complex infrastructures in the world. Um, if you are looking into uh, the numbers a little, Siemens has been focusing on a, co a pon company program called Vision 2020, which also is underpinned by an IT strategy program, which we started to execute two and a half years ago. Uh, we were already able to modernize, consolidate, and optimize uh, a lot of topics and infrastructure services. Meanwhile, we've been able to um, take out around a 150 to 200 million euro annual costs. And one of the major elements here is, of course, also network. Network is roughly 25 to 30% of our total infrastructure spend. So now mapping that against the corporate growth areas, digitalization, automation, and electrification, um, you can clearly see that we are an enabler. We need to cope with the future challenges. We need to especially um, support digitalization. This is a growth area where Siemens expects around 8 to 10 percent growth on an annual basis. And this, of course, puts enterprise ITs um, under pressure because you have to um, serve with different um, network services and also cope with different requirements. Therefore, um, we have been introducing a corporate program called Next Generation Network. Um, the main goal is really to eliminate our intranet. Sounds a little crazy, but that's exactly what we are going to implement. We are going to eliminate the internet, and the next corporate network in Siemens will be the internet. So the basic transport layer will always be internet. Then, of course, we have to change the way how we look at our network. Uh, we need to do a lot of things which have been already mentioned by Jay or by the other speakers which uh, you've been listening to earlier on. Um, so I think some very, um, very important aspects are that the user is getting the same user experience all the time, has single sign-on functionality. You, of course, need to micro-segment your networks, and you need to have a very, very powerful orchestration engine in place to ensure that you are able to connect the different endpoints, ideally uh, with an identity and access management which is really able to serve that demand, and an identity and access management which focuses, first of all, on the authentication of the user, of the device, using geolocation, maybe also contextual-based information to ease in the process uh, of identifying and um, authenticating the user. And at the same time, we really see that as a big, big opportunity to reduce complexity. Our current network is incredibly complex, and we have thousands and thousands of VLANs, and uh, as you can imagine, also a very, very big MPLS infrastructure around the globe. So this is really what we are focusing on. And last but not least, um, besides standardization and cost efficiency, a very, very tight integration with the Siemens Cyber Defense Center um, to ensure that we have proper um, integration and also alignment between our ISEC teams um, following up certain threats and alarms um, with our infrastructure. And then two more pieces, which we will be um, discussing a little later on. Of course, the office network, how we connect the user to the internet, and then the resource network, where we are leveraging software-defined mechanisms in the wide area network and also in the data center network. When I met Frederick about two years ago, and he said, we will, internet will be our corporate network. 
Um, we had been talking about it internally that that's where it's going to happen. But to hear from someone at Siemens talking about it was a big thing. I mean, think of the implications of that. Today, you kind of say, wow, is that what's going to happen? So that's where Zscaler kind of fit in. We shared with him, first of all, he said, huh, so you are looking at actually moving away from all this hub and spoke and being able to have a short, direct, straight path over the internet to your destination and your applications. And he said, of course, that's really what I'm looking for. I just had to make sure that's what we're looking for. So I shared with me how Zscaler took the approach where we essentially said, we're not really going to have any on-prem security devices. I mean, fundamentally, for the last 25 years, we have been doing network security. When your users are going to the internet, or they're going to your internal applications, or Azure or AWS, what network do you control? You don't control any network. If you don't control the network, how do you secure the network? All these appliances built in these modes that are on securing the networks. The biggest thing I think we need to appreciate is, in this new world, there's a destination you need to go to, the users everywhere, and you need some kind of policy platform that provides secure access and control to users based on policies, not network control. So really, the notion of network security, a $20 billion market, is about securing the network, makes no sense. It's about policy-based access. And when we shared this with Frederick and team, they said that's exactly what we are looking for. And Jay, maybe let me add to that uh, briefly. I mean, we had also seen IoT on that um, slide you were just showing. IoT is one of the major drivers why we do think that we have to anyhow change things. I mean, what we have been seeing over the last couple of years is already a shift of applications, enterprise applications, of course, to the public cloud. So uh, we had to, to cope with that challenge. On the other hand, this has tremendously changed our traffic flow, and we have the funny situation that people are VPNing into our internet and then accessing from the internet again applications in the internet, which, of course, is not getting you the best performance. But on IoT especially, um, you are currently seeing that a lot of devices are IoT enabled, but security is not a priority. And uh, in many cases, you will also not be able to add the security parameter later on. Um, and therefore, um, the challenge will be that we have to do that via the network. And the solution which we are just looking at and discussing is, from our point of view, a very good answer to that dilemma. Yeah. So you're looking at two things. The controls are still needed, but not the old kind. So what we took was we took the outbound gateway, created the relevant controls in the cloud to make sure you can have secure and fast access to external applications and services, either on the internet or as a SaaS application. And then we took the inbound control and built them in a new way without having to worry about network so the right user can have access to the right application. This is essentially the same thing that CSA is really talking about as SIC a uh, software-defined perimeter because you really don't, can really have a perimeter of your own. And, and with that, let's Freddie talk about the office network, some of the key requirements you had and how you went about fulfilling them. Yes, so now we are on the left-hand side, the office network. Um, clearly, the goal was to give the users the best possible performance and usability. I think the last bullet point summarizes it very well. Uh, we are targeting to a situation where people get internet connectivity in their offices like they get it at home, because this is what people are asking us for. And um, of course, we are moving um, away from MPLS-based uh, VPN connectivities to internet offloading, uh, which of course gets us also a tremendous uh, cost savings. Um, and uh, besides that, uh, clearly the intent is also that we have a fit-for-purpose architecture, um, which can serve use cases like Office 365 or WebRTC and so on. And the way Siemens really used that Zscaler architecture was being able to do local breakout in every office or you're sitting in a coffee shop or airport, your internet bound traffic simply gets pointed to one of the 100 data centers around the globe. Same policy, same protection happens, the shortest path, the same experience you can have while you're sitting at home. And, and using your wireless rather than the slow office stuff because the MPLS backhaul got eliminated. Uh, the best 
actually use case for local breakout is actually Microsoft Office 365 deployment. If you try to take all the traffic of Microsoft Office back to your data center, one choke point, and then try to connect to Office, it makes no sense. A cloud-based application, if every location goes directly to Office, it gives you better performance and it, it gives you better control. Okay. Now moving on to the resource network, Frederick. Yeah. What was needed there? So for the resource network, which is basically summarizing all the different data centers we are connecting towards and the wide area network, um, clearly our intent was that we are able to protect our resources from any kind of attacker uh, with state-of-the-art technology. Summarizing that or assuming that internet is the only transport layer we are able to use. And um, as I already mentioned earlier, authentication um, of user and device has a very, very high priority. And this is resulting clearly in policy-based access controls and a micro-segmented environment. Yep. So being able to provide a solution for that, so Zscaler essentially came in to offer what we call Zscaler private access. It's essentially a software-defined perimeter where your applications, whether sitting on Azure or AWS or your data center, they're not exposed to the internet. They're invisible. There's no such thing as getting on the network for application access. A user gets connected to the right application with the right policy. And it replaces a whole range of remote access and other requirements. And companies are getting rid of old school legacy VPN because VPN creates a lot more risk and makes users experience pretty slow. Let's move on to the last section, lessons learned. So you've gone through a lot of this stuff, time needed to deploy, cost, specification, share with some of your experience. Sounds very familiar. So, I mean, first of all, as we were approaching that entire program and project, we always said we need to think user-centric. The user needs to get a great usability and ex user experience. If we are not able to offer that, they will anyhow bypass us with any other kind of possible internet connectivities they can get. On the other hand, um, we need to mitigate business risks while um, focusing on cloud-based solutions. And I would really underline what Julia was stating earlier. I mean, we have reached the tipping point where also large, even large German uh, customers uh, are clearly um, focusing on cloud being the priority, public cloud being the priority. I think we have really reached that point. And we can also cope with the compliance challenges we have. I mean, acting in 192 countries, offering the services in these uh, countries are, or is, of course, driving complexity in terms of being compliant, compliant with all rules and regulations. Um, but also there, we have identified um, <coughs> great opportunities for Siemens if we are following certain, I would say, rules, um, which we clearly do, and this is manageable. I mean, that's, that's really one of the key takeaways from our side. We were very concerned about that topic, but in the end, we can say it is manageable. Um, IT simplification, I mean, it's all about simplifying, consolidating, and optimizing that infrastructure components. I think they're um, obvious topics. Um, we, we, we are clearly able um, to reduce the number of staff. We can in um, enhance the level of automation. And of course, that is also driving simplification. And last but not least, I have been um, making that point several times, ROI and cost savings. From our point of view, we are going to implement this to its full extent and at the same time save costs. Great. So it's, it's a matter of time. Right? We all know what happened to Siebel and PeopleSoft. Security appliances are essentially going to head in the same direction. Architecture, you know, when market changes, everyone wants to take their current solution and retrofit it something new. It's hard to build a power plant using home power generators. In the same way, trying to take today's security appliances meant for on-prem and try to put them in a data center and call it a cloud. I think there's a term for it called cloud washing. Zscaler had to build a massive cloud so users could go from any location to the nearest data center with the shortest amount of time, the shortest path, and have great experience with 100 data centers handling 30 billion plus requests a day, detecting and blocking 125 million threats every day. And that gives us a massive cloud effect. So customers 
the biggest of the big name, whether it's GE or Nestle or Morgan Stanley or Barclays or United Airlines or Air France or ABN AMRO and National Australian Bank, all these guys, all of their internet traffic goes through Zscaler. Wrapping up last few words, Frederick. Exactly. So um, my wrap up or summary would be that um, this sounds like an enormous change. I'm personally convinced that you are not able to do that in an evolutionary approach. You need to have a revolutionary approach, which we are clearly applying here. And um, from my point of view, you just need to figure out how to slice the elephant, how to get started, and then it's clearly doable. Excellent. So if you got a project in the area of SD-WAN transformation, access to AWS or Azure applications without having to do VPN or Office 365, Zscaler can help you. See us at our booth south 1207. Do you have any time for any questions or we are out? All right. Thank you so much. We appreciate the time. Thank Frederick, you. thank you.